Today we're going to be working in Blender 2.5. I'm actually working with Blender uh, 2.56 beta, I believe is the number I'm working with. And we're going to ask, be answering a question uh, that someone asked on one of my older Blender uh, game engine tutorials. Uh, the viewer's name was Boyism20. And his question was, when you create a character with a gun and you're shooting, how do you prevent... Uh, the gun being able to shoot more than a certain number of times. So basically, like, every time we hit space bar, we'll shoot, but let's say you shoot out one shot, he wants to wait 10 seconds or so before the person can shoot again. And that's what we're going to be going over today. And there's probably more than one way to do this. You could obviously write a Python script. We're going to try to do it without writing any scripts or any code here. And Blender makes that pretty easy. First thing we're going to do is we're going to click up here where it says Blender Render, and we're going to choose Blender Game. And that's setting up our project to be a game engine project. Uh, then up here where it says default, we're going to click here and go to game logic. And it's just going to set up a screen for uh, game editing, just make things a little bit easier for you. Uh, here's our camera view here. Uh, what I'm going to do, uh, first I'm going to grab my camera, grab, and I'm going to center click and drag to move the camera back. And I'm going to click G and grab to move it up just to get a better view here. Uh, then I'm going to hit 1 to go into the front view here anyway for a second. I'm going to hit spacebar and I'm going to type in uh, UV sphere, which is already there because that's the last thing I typed. And so we create a UV sphere. I'm going to scale it down a little bit, grab it, move it up so you can see it here. I'm going to scale it down a little bit more. And this is going to be our bullet object. And all we have to do for this object is down here, we're going to add a sensor. And it's going to be always and and we're going to choose our actuator to be a motion. And we got X, Y, and Z here. I'm just going to have it shoot straight up. Uh, and so I'm just going to move this to 0.10 here. Don't forget to connect these. So now if I hover over my 3D space here and hit P, oop, you can see the bullet shooting up. Next thing we need to do is we need to move that to another layer. So with the sphere selected, we're going to hit M and we'll just choose another layer. I'll choose the layer two here. Perfect. Um, next thing we're going to do is we're going to hit shift A and add an empty. I'm going to grab it and hit Z to move it on the Z axis. And I'm just going to move it up like that. And then I'm going to hit zero on my number pad to go back to my camera view. And uh, so now we're going to have to make this empty generate a uh, the, the sphere whenever someone hits space bar. So what we're going to do is down here, we're going to create a sensor. We're going to say it's a keyboard. And right here under key, we'll click that. And I'm just going to hit space bar. And so this will happen when we hit space bar. We're going to say end and connect that there. And we're going to add edit object. And we're going to click here and choose sphere as our object, unless you create another object or rename the object. So there we go. Now, if I hover over a 3D space here and hit P, when I hit spacebar, it creates a sphere there. The sphere is not moving though, and I'm not 100% sure why. Let's click right here because I did not connect these for the sphere. So don't forget to do that when you create that. I'm going to go back to layer one here. Sorry about that mistake. Now, if I hover over my 3D space and press P and hit spacebar, hey, I can shoot. But you see, if I start tapping real quick, I can create a whole bunch of bullets. And what we're trying to generate is where even if you hit the button, you're limited on the number of shots you can do in so many seconds. So we're going to add a property over here. I'm sorry, let's delete that. Make sure you have the empty object selected, add a property. I'm going to rename it. I'm just going to call it BT for bullet time, but you can call it whatever you'd like. Uh, and I'm going to change it to be an integer, which is like a whole number. Not like a whole number, it is a whole number. And it, by default, it's at the zero, which is perfect. And what we're going to do is we can minimize this keyboard uh, sensor here. And we can go down and add another sensor, and it's going to be a property. And we're going to say property, and we'll choose BT, our BT property. And we'll set the value to zero, and we'll connect this to here. So right now, for the sphere to shoot out of the empty, 
for the empty to create a new object of the sphere, two things have to be true because we have the end here. We have to have the keyboard, which is the space bar in this case, and the property of BT has to be set to zero for this to be true. Right now that is always true, but we're about to change that. We'll minimize this here, add another actuator property. Don't forget to connect this to here. And we are going to click on our drop down here and say BT value and we'll set it to 10. So now when we hover over our 3D space with our cursor here and hit P, when I hit spacebar it shoots once, but if I go to shoot again, no matter how much I hit spacebar, it's not going to shoot again. Why? Because BT is now set to 10 and the empty will only create a new object when you hit spacebar and BT equals zero. So now we have to get BT back to zero. So we're going to add another property sensor here and we're going to say not equal BT zero. So what this is saying, anytime that BT does not equal zero, we're going to do something. We're going to add another controller here of an end and we're going to add an actuator of property again. Don't forget to connect these. And we're going to choose BT again. And what are we going to set the value to? It's going to be BT minus 1. So every time this checks to see if BT equals 0, if it does not equal 0, we're going to subtract 1 from it. So when you shoot, BT becomes 10, so it's not equal to 0. And every time this loops, it's going to subtract 1. So we'll go 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Zero, and then it will stop looping again. Now, how fast does it do that? Well, first we have to turn on uh, pulse mode here, which is these first three lines. And you, when you hover over it, it says activate true level triggers pulse mode. Now, frequency right here, the higher this number, the slower the countdown. So right now, with it set to two, if I go hover over here again and I hit P, I hit spacebar, I can hit spacebar a whole lot, but you can see it's shooting only every second or so. So if we want it to shoot every 10 seconds or so, we just move this number up until we get to where we want. We'll try 15, see where that's at. Now I can hit spacebar all I want, and you can see it won't shoot until BT equals zero. And that is how you do it without writing any code. It's that simple. I hope you understood. We'll do a quick review since we're done kind of early. We've uh, created here, we have when you press spacebar, NBT equals zero, which it does by default. What are we going to do? We're going to create a sphere object, which shoots up because the sphere has that uh, property, and BT will equal 10. Now, if BT does not equal zero, which it doesn't because BT now equals 10, we are going to subtract one from BT on each loop at a frequency of 15 and be sure to turn on active true level pulse mode. And that is it. And I hope that you have a great day. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K. There's a link in the description. And I'm going to be doing more and more with Blender 2.5 because so many people are asking. And especially with the game engine, I might start my um, third or first person shooter tutorials all over again 2.5 if I have time. But I will at least be doing some sort of gaming tutorials uh, coming up with Blender 2.5. Uh, in the near future, and I will also be doing more Pi game tutorials for those of you who want to create 2D games with Python. So I thank you once again for watching, and I hope that you have a great day.